As a factor is interested as well, the global rate increases stop. Last week, the first Super Central Bank week of 2023 had on. The Federal Reserve European Central Bank, Bank of England, and the Reserve Bank of Australia and other central banks have announced interest rates policy decisions, which continues to attract high attention in the global market. In 2022, the world's major central bank series interest rates has the fastest and largest pay in, pace in more than 20 years, trying their best to soaring inflation. Recently, the central banks of many countries announced to stop interest rate hike cycle. The Federal Reserve also showed the, slow, the slower pace of interest rate hike. The previously highly consistent global interest rate hike a tide of peer diversion. Therefore, the international debate is whether the interest rate, global interest rate hike will stop. Experts believe that, the inflation gradually slowing down and the economic pressure increasing, the central banks in Europe, US, and the UK are not far from suspending interest rate hikes. The key point of disagreement is when. However, the road ahead is not easy and they need to strike a balance between fighting inflation and stabilizing the economy. Global central banks to raise interest rates appear shunned. Recently, the Federal Reserve, European Central Bank, and the BOE raised boots as scheduled. U.S. on February 1st raised its interest rates by 25 basis points between 4.5% and 4.75% in line with consensus expectations. It was the eighth consecutive rate hike since March last year, and the first in the cycle by just 25 basis points, meaning the Fed is slowing the pace further. In contrast to the Federal Reserve, ECB and the BOE continue to catch up on it. ECB had a monetary policy meeting on February 2nd, deciding to raise three key interest rates to in the eurozone by 50 basis points, reiterated as a rate increase by 50 basis points in March. Since July 2022, the ECB has raised interest rates for four major times in a row, with a, global, uh, with a total of 25, 250 basis points. On February 2nd, the Bank of England raised in interest rates by 50 basis points to 4%. It is the tenth time that the Fed, that the, that the bank has raised interest rates since December 2021. On February 7th, the Reserve Bank of Australia announced that it'll raise each benchmark interest rates by 25 basis points to 3.35%, and raise the balance rate of foreign exchange settlement by 25 basis points to 3.25%. It was the ninth consecutive RBA rate hike since May 2022. The RBA said it was likely to continue to in raise interest rates in the coming months to cope with high inflation. These countries continued to the pace of interest rate hikes over the past year, but the central banks have recently slowed or even stopped their interest rates by a hike cycle because of a pessimistic recession. On January 25th, the Bank of Canada raised interest rates by 25 basis points to 4.5%, said it expected to keep the policy rate at current levels if the economy looks roughly matched the monetary policy outlook. As a result, the Bank of Canada became the first G7 central bank to formally conditionally suspend interest rate hikes. On January 19th, Malaysia's central bank also unexpectedly announced that it will stop raising interest rates at, and keep it at 2.75%. On the same day, Norway's central bank also announced a pause, and but it still could raise, to, could raise a 25 basis point rate hike in March to contain inflation. Indonesia expected a 25 basis point raising in its bank, benchmark to rate to 5.75%, nearly the end of the cycle being led by the Fed in raising interest rates. If you can summarize the main characteristics of the global financial markets in 2022, it is suggested that the stagnation in expectations is, is intertwined with the inflation reality. The biggest event in the global monetary and financial system in 2022 is the rapid tightening of the Fed's monetary policy caused by a bigger than expected inflation. Hu Zhihao, a researcher at the Institute of Finance and Banking of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, said that, looking back to the glo bloody global interest rate hike, the Federal Reserve aggressive interest rate hike forced the global economy into slow 
spillover risk of tightening. To curb inflation, the central banks had to follow the Federal Reserve in raising interest rates. According to the Bank of International Settlements, 38 interest central banks around the world raised interest rates 210 times in 2022. Among the many developed economies have even rarely interest, raised interest rates by 75 basis points. The dollar is the core currency of the global financial cycle. There are f- big differences in the Fed's mod- motivation to raise interest rates, but they can generally divide it into three ca- types, economic overheating, inflation, and pure monetary policy shocks. This round of Federal Reserve rate hike has three characteristics. High inflation driven, first fast and then slow, rate, interest rate increase and the balance sheet contraction, Hu Zhihao said. Why has the Fed Reserve, Federal Reserve raising interest rates frequently since 2022 triggering a wave of global rate hikes? The immediate reason is the continued tightening of monetary policy caused by a higher, higher than expected inflation. As early as the first quarter of 2021, the U.S. began showing signs of rising inflation. But it did not start to rise until the first quarter of 2022, due to fears of the sustainability of aggregate demand, coupled with the mindset by a long-term low inflation environment. Since then, the Fed has to raise interest rates frequently in order to curb rising inflation. The soaring inflation in the U.S. is the result of a combination of overheated domestic economy, raising international com- commodity price caused by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. A poor and a poor global supply chain is the, in the impact of the pandemic. In addition, the Fed has misjudged the severity and sustainability of the high inflation, with a missing tightening policy in high, forcing it to adopt overcorrecting measures to combat high inflation. For the Fed's recently slowing raising interest rates, the Fed Chairman Powell, after the monetary policy meeting at the news conference, considering the cumulative tightening effect for of monetary policy and monetary policy on the economic activity and inflation lag. The Fed decided to slow the pace, which helps the Fed assess whether the economy is developing towards its market, towards its target, to determine the future to achieve enough restrictive policy stance required to raise interest rates. This time, the Fed has raised the target range for the federal fund to rates to between 4.5% and 4.75%, close to the usual level of around 5%. There is limited room for a big rate hike, considering the lack of policy effects. The rate and frequency of the Fed's slowing slowing rate increase should be the pace of monetary policy. Guo Hongyu observed that, on on one hand, although the gasoline price in the U.S. is still high, it has fallen and the gasoline price price in California has returned from 5 to 4. The January statistics also show a slowdown in inflation growth. On the other hand, rising interest rates has led to a stronger dollar to widen the trade deficit. In the U.S., inflation continues to fall more than expected, and the economic downward pressure, the Federal Reserve has no need to actively raise interest rates. F- further slowing down, further slowdown in the interest rate hike is basically consistent with the current macroeconomic situation in the U.S. The rate hike is not fully synchronized among economies around, around the world due to differences in economic fundamentals and inflation trends. Mr. Hood said some emerging market countries have stolen major developed economies since the start of the rate hike cycle. With the external supply shock and the domestic inflationary pressure significantly eased, the time point to stop the inflation, the rate interest rate hike will be relatively earlier. But at least in the first half of the year, there is no complete assertion that the global rate hike wave will be over. Inflation reduction target is met in the short term. Although inflation has fallen in the U.S. and Europe, it is still far from reaching the final goal. The U.S. has experienced many periods of high inflation when Fed failed to immediately return inflation to its 2 to 3 percent target. Since 1920, 13 high inflation in the United States, inflation soared more than 5%, the average peak of 9.2%, the average of 12 months was slow to 5.1%, which means that the inflation may be near 5.1% in May. Historical data, the average of 21 months to fallen below 4%, which means that inflation may be fallen below 4% in the first quarter of 2022, 2024. Sorry. What cannot be ignored is that it's still uncertain whether the Fed will continue to 
lowering its rate. Well, stop of uh, stop raising interest rates or not, because of the high uncertainty of the U.S. economic outlook. Right now, record low un- unemployment, excessive wage growth, and negative labor productivity are the ma- major obstacles to the Fed in curbing inflation. In January, the average hour hourly wage was thirty three point zero three dollars, up ten cents from the previous month and forty four point four percent year on year. Wages raising too fast is a bad. It's a it's bad against curbing inflation. If inflation does not fall significantly for some time to come, to, to come, the Fed will have to continue to tighten and cool the labor markets by squeezing aggregate demand. Achieving the two percent inflation target is a challenge for the Fed, especially the ECB, who analyzed that the eurozone is facing a more severe stagflation problem than the U.S. Has led the U.S. to into a recession cycle, with the global economic slowing and energy prices continue to fall. Overall, inflation in the eurozone has peaked in October 2022, but core inflation remains high, driven by labor shortages and rising wages. The distribution of service inflation to core inflation may rise steadily, making it inflection point lag behind overall inflation. In the short term. It is more difficult for the Fed, for the ECB to tighten global fun- financial t- conditions, lower aggregate demand, and delay the energy crisis. As the demand of effect of tightening policy continu- continues to play, the ECB is likely to revise its economic growth forecast downward, from a shall from a shallow recession to a deep recession. The World Bank has warned that a, gl- a global wave of interest rate hikes will push the global economy into recession. Especially as developing countries face a series of financial crisis risks and lasting damage, the spillover effect of the Fed rate hike on emerging market continues. Co- market countries can depend on both the driver and the fundamentals of the U.S. economy, as well as the eco- economic fundamentals of emerging market countries. Guo Hongyu said that under the background of this round of high inflation driven, driving the Fed's steep rate hike and contraction of the balance sheet. Some emerging market countries with fragile fundamentals are facing the triple impact of sharp exchange rate depreciation, continuous, continuous capital outflows, and financial market shocks. Last last September, the World Bank issued a report suggesting that fin- central banks should strengthen coordination and clear communication of policy decisions while ma- maintaining independence. Which would help anchor inflation expectations and reduce the level of tightening needed. The central banks in developed economies should pay close attention to the cross-border, border spill effects of many monetary tightening. Emerging markets and developing economies should strengthen a macroprudential regulation and establish foreign exchange reserves. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.